looking forward to not so much to here, but hereafter. And realizing that I'm living for something so much more than what right, right here. You know, a few weeks ago we talked about in Scripture where it says we are not to live unto ourselves. And when we realize that we're not supposed to live unto ourselves, who are we living as unto? Who are we living for? Are we living for self? Are we living for this world? Are we living for the present day? Or are we actually living for eternity? Are we living for God? Ask yourself that question. Think about this life and the choices that we make. Are we seeking to please God or are we seeking to please self? Are we wanting to please flesh? And I know this begins, and this, this message will actually will begin in your life what we know as spiritual warfare. Because at this point, when you start hearing things like putting God first, seeking God first, there's a conflict that's created in you. Where Paul says this law that he finds at work in him is present with him all the time. And you see that war, that, that law, he doesn't you don't realize it until you start down this path of righteousness where you're putting God first. Or at least seeking to put God first. Because there's a war that goes on that doesn't want you to put God first. You see, once you head down this path and once you start following God and once you commit your life to God, you see that committing life, your life to God is key, I believe, in your relationship to Him. And once you commit your life to God and once you say, yes, Lord, and you start saying no to the world and you start doing that more and more, there's a battle that goes on, there's a battle that rages inside, and it's not fun. Because now you're faced with a choice of which way to go, what to do, what decision I have to make today. Now granted, it's not always one of those huge, life-changing, dramatic moments. But we need to understand that even in the small things, that decisions that we make are very important. And they lead to bigger things. Now, we also need to learn this. That in priority making and list making and scheduling and all of that, let us not forget that God does care about us and that God is able to provide. You know, it's something that we do a lot of times. We rebuke and actually sometimes poke at um, in wrongful ways at prosperity preachers. We, we look at these preachers and we say that we don't agree with what they're preaching. We have a problem with what they're saying because they're using faith to obtain material gain. And that there's a problem there. There actually is. But here's a question that I have for you. As you're rebuking prosperity preachers, are we in the wrong for not trusting God to provide? You see, there's a fine line there, and I'm not saying that we're trying to use God as some would try to do to get what they want. But in that other side of it, are we trusting God to provide for us? You see, down this road of understanding and putting God first, as we make priorities, the first thing we've got to come to realization is that we cannot do this on our own ability. That we cannot even get up and go to work on our own. Who rises you up in the morning? Who lays you down at night? Who watches over you while you're sleeping? Have you ever thought of that? You might be saying to yourself, well, I've got a secure job. I'm healthy. I've got it all taken care of. I've got a savings. I've got, I've got a plan for my financial future. I, I know the job where I'm working at is not going to shut down, and so everything's great. But what if it does shut down tomorrow? What if something happens? I was talking to a man who just recently just passed away, which really shocked me. But when I, I started working with this man, he was working at this place for 25 years, building up a retirement and all that, and one day they came in and shut the doors. And 
The question is, I'm not asking you to be a negative thinker, but the question is, where do you put your trust? Are you trusting in your ability to think? Are you trusting in your ability to work? Are you trusting in your own financial security? I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a savings built up. That is something we should do. I'm not saying that we shouldn't plan for retirement. That is something we should do. We know we can't count on government entitlements to take care of us, can we? And we shouldn't anyway, but we know we can't because they're not going to be there much longer. And so we should plan for that. But in planning, who are you trusting in when that time comes? Who are you trusting in on your everyday provision? You see, we can make fun of prosperity preachers and we can say that they're wrong for using faith to gain materially, but are we trusting God to provide for us every day? Or are we one of those who worry? Now, in that perspective, let's take an honest look at things we value the most. Now, whenever we understand that God provides for us, do we then complain that God provides for us differently than what our culture demands? You're like, well, what's that mean? <coughs> well, our culture that we live in has a different view of things that we need. What are some things that our culture, maybe you think, that we just absolutely cannot live without? You ever thought about it? A ring -a -ling 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 -ling. I can't live without that. I mean, if, if we don't have our cell phone, I know people that have turned around and been late for work and just go back and get their cell phone. Can't have it without it. You got, oh, my phone's dead. What am I going to do? And I'm not making fun because that's become, I mean, it's become a real, honest to goodness dependency. Now, those cell phones are legitimate for business. They're definitely legitimate for emergencies and stuff like that. But whenever God doesn't provide for us a cell phone, are we going to complain against Him? Do you understand? Or maybe He doesn't provide for us our satellite television. Or maybe it's not the, the new this or new that. And we, we can go down that list if you want. But I don't see it. Yeah, I do believe you, hopefully believe that you understand where I'm going with this. Whenever God doesn't provide for what our culture demands, are we complaining against Him? And we overlook the showers of blessings that we need to count every day. The health that we have is worth more than money can buy. The roof over our head, especially when times get cooler outside. Amen. Clothing on our back. Things like that. Do we fail to realize how fortunate we really are? And we sometimes may look at this scripture and say, well, I don't worry about clothing. I don't worry about food. You know, well, we need to thank God that we don't. Right. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about how easy it is to get clothing? Well, I don't get to go to Carnaby, and I don't get to go to Kohl's and Sears and buy the new clothes. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. It's so easy to be able to go down to a, will, a Goodwill store or a CDC or something like that and find clothes for a dollar. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, some really nice clothes down there for a dollar. Have you ever thought what a blessing it is? Well, I'm just above that. Well, maybe you need to come down a little bit. Have you ever thought about what a blessing it is that we have food pantries around here? That if we are hungry, we can access those food pantries. We can access even the church today if we're really hungry and starving. And we're not just looking for someone to give us money so we can use it on something else. But we're actually, we're actually hungry and we can come to someone and they can have food to provide. Even those who don't have a huge bank account can still have food. That's a blessing. We don't worry about stuff like that. We shouldn't worry about stuff like that. That's a blessing to be living in a place, in a country, where we don't. But in turn, we shouldn't take it for granted. We should be thankful. And we should give God praise that He does provide for us our needs. And that He's more than able to provide for us. Now, He does not promise to provide our wants. You may not get the video game, kids, sorry. 
You may not get the big screen TV like everybody else has. You may not have that brand new refrigerator or stove like everybody else has, but God provides for you a way to cook. God provides for you a way to keep your meat cool. And we should be thankful and we should give God praise. Amen. And not complain when things don't go exactly like we want to. And we should realize this, that God does provide. Amen. He does provide. <clears throat> understanding this we also need to realize as I shared with you last week about how much God cares for us God values us do you know that you see we also live in a time and I'm not trying to dramatize this message more than I'm not trying to be this melodramatic and oh we need to just build this all up you know I get tired of seeing all this drama on television I don't know about you, but this, I'm going to get off on this a little bit of a tangent, you know. I try every once in a while, me and Becky have a little fun watching game shows. And they bring drama on the game show where you're going to cry and get so worked up and it's a game. <laughs> and why? Well, I'm not trying to bring, build up drama here so you to get all emotional, but I want to share with you, and I hope that you realize this, that God does value your life. But we do live in a time where life is not valued, don't we? You know, Casting Crown sings a song where it talks about save the trees but kill the children. Do you honestly care? I was thinking the other day, and I don't want to sound, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, to, to gross you out. But have you seen the video of the piles of dead babies that were killed before the war? Have you, do you realize how many babies are being killed every single day? And I'm not just talking about little embryos that you can't see. Because they're important too, okay? But I'm talking about late term. Babies that are ready to be born. That are left out on a cold, stainless steel table. And not even allowed to be tended for. To lay there and die. And we don't care. We don't care because we don't see it. But that's happening every single day. We are responsible for what's going on 